we have no idea how to set up these guys at all. So, not even the High Priest is immune to Demon Blight. I guess he hit his limit. What was that? What? What is that? Where did he? The demon returned to human form? And what is that beast? There's a barrier here. So what? The Abbey is holding this thing captive? This barrier. I know it well. It seems our errand has met with success. At least technically speaking. Right. Let's get out of here. What did you do to the High Priest? What is this demon? I don't know. And I don't care. Do not mock me! You are the mockery. What do you hope to do to me without your exorcist powers? <laughs> Who are you? That was some night, though. Stay sharp. Dawn hasn't come yet. Hey guys, mission complete. Stealing a Moloch from an exorcist. How did you pull that one off, Magilu? The info was my Moloch to begin with. Then he betrayed me and ran away from his rightful home. <laughs> Miss Mogulu treats Malakim so bad, bad, bad. I couldn't take it anymore. After a little while, I ran into Madame Eleanor. She was so much nicer to me. I see, I see. Now, just how am I going to punish you for that little slander on my character? <laughs> the bad, bad days are here again! You're okay. an exorcist, then. Eh, I'm a witch, silly! Bianfu here is the catalyst thingy for my magic. But only exorcists can form a pact with Malakim. <laughs> oh, yeah? Says who? Someone who likes making dumb rules? <laughs> Enough, Velvet. Questioning her is a good way to go mad. You did the job well, it seems. You heard quickly. That's about all I'm good for. And with these old ears, sometimes it's hard to hear at all. Then did you learn anything about the key for passing through the barrier? Yes. Only the high-ranking exorcist can enter through the barrier protecting Artorius and his temple. Exorcists are considered high-ranking if they are accompanied by at least four greater Malakim. Hmm... So if we had four powerful Malakim with us, we could slip through. But Malakim outside the Abbey's control are rare. They thought this through. Hmm. Well, I may not look it, but I'm a greater Malak. Aizen, Lafiset, and Bienfu. So we just need one more. We'll have to steal it then. So I have to come too? Sounds like a pain. Why? Then stay. We don't need you. We'll keep Bienfu, though. You have no courtesy. How about, it would be an honor, Madame Mogilu? More like that. Would you come if we asked? To attack the Shepherd?
<laughs> Depends on how you ask. A battle between shepherd and demon sounds like a real fine spectacle. I'm afraid this is just how Miss Moggy Lou is. Miss Moggy Lou, um, I, I would like it if, if you came with us. Pl please. Luffy said. Well, what choice does that leave me? I suppose I could tag along a little while longer. You can count on me. Melchior will be there. You and I still share the same goal. Our business is done. You can have this back. Keep it, dear. As long as you have that, we will count you as an ally worthy of aid. Allies of the ones trying to kill the savior? You might regret that. <laughs> Such a considerate young lady. <laughs> Listen, dear, all of us live on the fringes of their so-called reason, do we not? Don't say I didn't warn you. Velvet, wait. My, my. <sighs> I can't blame him. It's been a long night. Some aid for your allies? Of course, right away. And your day. You're finally up. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. Getting sleepy or hungry is a natural part of life. I won't eat you. What about your wounds? Feeling pain? That's also natural, right? I'm fine. It was nothing. You're really tough, aren't you, Velvet? You have to be tough if what you seek is revenge. Revenge? We're leaving. Rokuro and the others are waiting at the plaza. Oh. Joy to face a clear, refreshing morning, especially after a long night of meting punishment on my heartless betrayer. <laughs> my poor battered body. You better not kill our key. You're one to talk. Better not eat the boy. He's your precious key now. I know. Oh? You're facing the shepherd and an Empyrean. Old Shepsy's one thing, but Empyreans are, you know, just gods who created the world. You think you can win just by smacking it around a bit? That's no Empyrean. It's a phony. Artorius is just using a legend to control the people. Wouldn't a true god be able to do something about the demon blight? <sighs> you don't believe in Enominat? I believe there exists something people call Enominat. But it's just a Moloch that used a special art to bring the other Molochim into our world. You sound confident. I witnessed it three years ago. Well, if 
it's not actually a god we're against, we just might stand a chance. Of course we do. And ultimately, our target is Artorias. I don't care about anything else. Revenge against Artorias. For her brother. All right, Lafayette. Which way is the Empyrean's throne? Um, it was north of Logris, in the mountains up the Danan Highway. If exorcists are keeping up their inspections, they might provide us a chance to steal another Moloch. I sent my men a Sylphje with orders to scout out the inspectors. With their information, we'll be able to plan the attack. Hmm. We can meet up at Port Zexen. That's the plan. So we need one more map. Oh, another... Those silk jays are handy little birds, aren't they? Not only will they always find their destination, they can make for emergency rations in a pinch. I hear grilled silk jay goes rather well with a nice glass of the hard stuff. It's because of the work those birds do for us that we're able to stay one step ahead of the Abbey. Those birds are indispensable to us pirates, and we consider them a part of our crew. Don't even joke about eating them. <laughs> all right, all right. Still, I wonder how they actually do their thing. I know that carrier pigeons rely on their homing instincts, but sylph jays can locate a person wherever they are, right? They're really smart birds. I read in a book that rather than memorizing locations, they can pick up on people's wavelengths. When you send out a sylph jay, the bird can sense the change in your thoughts and will seek out the recipient you have in mind. I hardly ever see them in the wild. Are they a kind of Moloch or something? No, they're not Molochim. They're just an incredibly rare species native to an island in the north. It's a funny story. A chance storm sent us docking at that island, and a mother sylph jay got blown onto our ship, eggs, nest, and all. Sadly, the mother bird died almost immediately. But Benwick stepped in and kept her eggs safe and warm. So that's why they're so attached to him. Usually, they're really hard to train as messenger birds, too. That's Benwick for you. He's always had a knack for things that would give other people trouble. Maybe when they hatched, they took one look at his wild hair and mistook him for their mother. You know what? They are comfortable enough with him to use his head for their nest. So you might have a point. Now that you mention it, he did ask me not to hit him on the head, because one of the sylph jays just laid her eggs. Well, if more birds are on the way, we could just eat one to see how it tastes. No! Don't even think about it! <laughs> it was worth a try. <sighs> oh, another skit? Hello again! I'm Yenfu, a Moloch! Nice to meet you all! Just so you know, I'm a greater Moloch. You're a greater Moloch too, Luffy said. I'm sure we'll get along great. I'm... classified as a greater Moloch? That should be no surprise. You've got a lot of power, despite your appearance. You're a greater Moloch too, aren't you, Aizen? So I've been told. But I can't say I care for measures made by folks who tether my kind. I didn't know that's what it was. I'm sorry. No. Don't worry about it. Just promise me you won't judge your own value from a label given to you by others. I won't. I promise. <laughs> what if that's all that gives me self-worth? They're pirates and demons. Pay them no heed. To me, you are the greatest of all. The greatest? Do you really mean it? Oh, Miss Mogilu, you're so kind. You've changed so much since I left. But you haven't changed at all. You are eternally my greatest servant. Oh, I don't want to be the greatest then. Oh, this is bad, bad. And our roster of the oblivious grows longer. Mm, yeah, we are big, big killing assassins family. I hear the High Priest was injured, and will be recuperating somewhere for the near future. The church is saying he was cleaning his villa when something fell off a shelf and hit him. But there's also rumors that thieves snuck into the palace and attacked him. If that's true, who could have done it? 
He's always been there for the people, and everyone looks up to him. What a terrible rumor. Indeed. I want to believe it's just that, a rumor. But it's got the children all frightened. I'm not scared at all! Liar! Sis saw you crying! I'm the one who's not scared at all! If any bad guys show up, I'll handle them! Ooh, scary. I'm sure bad guys won't come near you. Something fell off a shelf? Nice. They're doing a really good job of covering this up. If it got out that the High Priest was murdered, and in the castle of all places, the people would lose faith in the government. Hey, I remember you! I'd never forget someone dressed as weird as you guys. <laughs> You're those traveling misfits! The ones who did that dove act in Logris! Mad Lou's Menagerie, right? It's Moggy Lou's Menagerie. Get it right or pay the price! So, you saw us in Logris? That's right! I was there on Port Zexan business. I really looked forward to seeing you perform, but it never happened. But today's my lucky day. How about performing here in Port uh -oh. Zexan tomorrow? I want to see that sullen girl go coo again. It was hilarious. And that magician's dove trick, too. <laughs> sure, but I'll have you know we don't come cheap. Oh, I've got the money. I'd pay anything to see that again. No. Oh, come on, please. Take a hint. Hey, now, don't be like that. Sorry, friend. Best give it up. Otherwise, my apprentice here might show you a special trick she's been itching to practice. One where she makes you disappear. Ooh, <laughs> that sounds fun. Do it! If you insist. But just a warning. There's no guarantee you'll make it back. Still want to try? Wait, seriously? Seriously. And remember, it's Moggy Lou's Menagerie. See you at our next show. Lord Artorius's speech really struck a chord with me. I'm sure everyone else in town feels the same way. Actually, it would be problematic if they don't. Why would you have a problem with that? One word, lady. Business. The ceremony to move the great Empyrean Enominat is going on now, right? After a speech as moving as that, anyone would want to offer a prayer to the new Empyrean. Which is why I'm selling commemorative chalices. They've just come in from Port Zexan. Oh, Enominat's blessings are many indeed. Are you decorating the chalices with anything? I'm just about to deliver them to the craftsmen to get them engraved. I just hope all this effort doesn't go to waste. Impossible! This is the perfect opportunity. I guess amateurs just don't get it. <laughs> I may not know business, but I know how this story ends. Artorius, the ceremony, all of it. I'll end this by my own hand. Man, I've been feeling really out of it recently. I was much happier when I was drinking sweet, sweet nectar. It suddenly got a lot harder to get. The price shot up 20 times in the black market. I came to the capital hoping it'd be easier to find, but no one's got any. Give it up. It's got vermilion ore in it. What? Vermilion ore? I heard that stuff is crazy addictive. And real bad news. It'll be easier to quit now that it's harder to find. Real sailors don't need that crap, right? Yeah, you're right. I don't need nectar. From now on, I'm going to the bar after work. Hey, buddy, thanks for the tip. Don't do that, kid. Oh, my God. We're to meet up with the scouts at Port Zexon. Get out of my way. What's the matter, Lafayette? 
You look like you're not feeling well. Doesn't he always? You can stay out of this. You're a demon swordsman. Aizen is a cursed Moloch. Magilu is a bizarre witch. But... What am I? <laughs> Turning existential here. You're Velvet's tool and emergency rations, aren't you? That's what Lady Teresa called me too. A tool. But... I'm alive. Ah, uh, I get it. You're starting to wonder what your place in the world is. In that case, there's only one answer. You have to decide it. Huh? It's all up to you. It depends on what you want. That's what it means to be alive. You control the rudder of your life. Your hands on the wheel. My life. My rudder. Doubts are okay, too. They're just further proof you're alive. I'll protect you until you find your answer. Your arts have helped me often enough. All right. I don't really understand. But thank you. Pretty, pretty words and all. But take care who you listen to, kid. Demons and Reapers, remember? I hear there's a wicked witch about, too. Get going or get left behind. Ah! We risk the wrath of the revenging reprobate! For now, let our rudders take us forward! Okay, wait here. So let's face this guy. Deception! Look at the size of that axe. Watch yourselves. This guy means business. I know, I know. Training isn't worthwhile if you get killed while doing it. That wasn't worth the effort. Whew. That thing was pretty strong. You just wanted something good to train on. I'm not in it just for myself. If I get stronger, I'll be more helpful in your battles. This counts towards the repayment of my debt. But you don't deny at least part of it was for yourself. Of course not. Every true swordsman wants to train so they can improve themselves. It might be a little late to ask, but what debt exactly are you repaying, Rokuro? My sword is my life. When I was separated from it, Velvet told me where to find it. Also, she broke me free from a 500-year-long prison sentence. You say that like it's an afterthought. And that's why I can't fully trust you. I don't follow. Us Rangetsu men are renowned for our sense of duty and commitment. Actually, now that you mention it, Rangetsu's a pretty unusual last name. I heard your family specializes in unconventional swords and fighting styles. That's true. Our ancestor was a swordsman from way off in another country who came to this land a long time ago. A foreign swordsman, huh? I guess that explains why your swords and techniques stand out so much. He had quite a hard time getting by in this unusual land, until he was taken in by an aristocratic family. Ever since, the Rangetsu clan has accepted the rule of their benefactors and has served them in repayment of their debt. Serve them as bodyguards? Bodyguards, assassins, spies, body doubles. Whatever the order, your family will carry it through. Always return that which you've borrowed, even if you must repay it with your life. That was our ancestor's creed. In truth, four of my five older brothers are dead. You have to admit, we take our sense of duty seriously. Yeah. All right, I get it. You and your family are all tied to your sense of honor. That seems to be the case. We can count on him. As long as he's on our side, at least. Oh, come on, that's not fair. 
Well, this was a nice toy. And I kinda re watch uh, this, what is called this anime, and I just watched it just for the two episodes of Bazaar. Hello, Sunny King. Where did I get it? And the interaction there was pretty good actually. I wish they used that in the game now. But it's a little different, so what can do? <laughs> 